Welcome to UGC e Pachala PG Learning and Food Science. I am Ms. Shajini Judith, Assistant Professor from the Department of Home Science. And I am going to be talking to you about the quality aspects that help in the grading of meat and the different cuts of meat. This model will enable you to acquire an in knowledge on the quality aspects of meat and also identify the different cuts of meat. Meat, as you all know, is a highly perishable, expensive food. The important characteristics of a good quality meat are its freshness, tenderness, texture, flavor and juiciness. Even though it is very difficult to tell the quality of meat by looking at it, there are several characteristics that will help us while making a choice. Always buy meat from a clean, well-ventilated shop. Check that the assistants are handling the meat hygienically. Meat deteriorates rapidly. Do not buy more than what you need unless you, you are planning to freeze it. An approximate guide of the amount of meat that is needed per person without bones is about 120 to 150 grams of the uncooked weight and with bones a person will require about 150 to 300 grams of uncooked weight. Check that there is not an excessive amount of bone or fat that will be wasted when you prepare the meat. Check that the meat is moist. Meat that has been left exposed to the air for a long time will have a dry surface. Look at the color of the meat. Meats naturally vary in color, but there are some general guidelines that will again help you to choose. Myoglobin, a protein that is responsible for the red color of the meat, is fixed in the muscles of the animal and when it, uh, com uh, it, when, and when it combines with oxygen, it becomes oxymyoglobin and produces a bright red color that contributes to the color of the meat. The color of the meat is also influenced by the age of the animal, the species, the sex of the animal, the diet of the animal and even the exercise it gets. The meat from older animals will generally be darker in color because the myoglobin level increases with age. Exercised muscles are always darker in color. So if you look at this diagram, you will find that the fresh meat is bright red in color because of the myoglobin that is present in it. The, now moving on to the color of the beef, beef has a cher deep cherry red, slightly moist in appearance with globules of fat in the lean visible as marbling. Veal, which is also obtained from the cattle, should be very pale beige or pink and very soft and moist in texture. Lamb should have a bright pink or brown with a small quantity of firm white feet. Pork, which is obtained from the swine, should be pale pink or brown. The flesh should be firm and the fat should be white. The rind of the muscle should not be too thick. Always look at the texture of the meat. The length of the muscle fibers and the coarseness of the grain are again indicators of the tenderness of meat. While buying meat, avoid joints with obvious signs of gristle and excessive amounts of fat. Now there are three major grades of meat, the prime, the choice and the select. This, the prime um, has um, the most marbling. It is usually sold to high-end restaurants and uh, to specialty meat markets and some supermarkets also carry it now. Um, this has the most desirable characteristic of marbling in it and makes it more palatable. The fat marbling gives the meat its tenderness and juiciness. Now moving on to the next uh, grade of meat, it's called as the choice cut. They have a little less marbling when compared to the prime and uh, this is uh, widely available in most of the markets. The select is the third type of meat based on its quality. It has the least amount of marbling so it makes it leaner and a little less juicy and a little less flavorful when compared to the prime and the choice. This is a steak. Um, um, you can see it in the different uh, grades, the select steak, the choice steak and the prime steak. The last picture is uh, the full blood wagyu. Wagyu in Japan means a cow. Uh, the wagyu is the Japanese uh, beef cattle 
And uh, one interesting uh, aspect of this Wagyu full blood beef is that um, this species of uh, cow is not crossbred with other animals and it has a distinct uh, layer of marbling on it which gives this meat uh, its unique tenderness and juiciness. Now there are certain factors on which meat is graded, the, the quality aspects on which meat is graded. There are three major uh, factors on which the meat can be graded. One is conformation. Conformation has to do with the bulk and general form of the animal. A full stocky, well developed carcass is said to have a good conformation. Retail cuts retail from an animal with good conformation will be juicy and they have a good amount of meat surrounding the bone. Then the finish. Finish has to do with the appearance of fat and its distribution in meat. I've already told you the fat in the meat contributes to juiciness and tenderness but the fat in, that is present on the surface of meat should be creamy, it should not be yellow in color, it should be waxy but it should not be brittle in texture and it should be uniformly distributed throughout the lean muscle mass and should not be found bunched in large clumps between the muscle tissue. So if all these characteristics are going to be present then it indicates a good finish. Um, the, the third aspect on which the meat is graded is the quality. The quality, when I say quality, I am referring to the tenderness and the palatability of the meat when it is cooked. The best quality meat has a velvety or a silky feel. It is very smooth and soft to touch and a small amount of connective tissue is evident and its color is characteristic of the kind of meat that is being graded. Apart from the conformation, the finish and the quality, meat is again um, graded on the basis of two other factors. They are the maturity of the animal and marbling. The maturity of the animal affects the texture, firmness and color of the meat as I have already indicated earlier. Marbling which refers to the amount and distribution of fat uh, which appears as white flecks within the lean muscle mass is again an important index or indicator of quality. The quality, consistency and character of juices or extractives contained in the muscle fibers also contribute to the quality of meat. Good quality lamb mutton has a smooth covering of clean, white, brittle fat over most of the exterior surface. The lean meat is pinkish red in color in the lamb and deeper red in mutton. The texture of the lean meat is fine grained and velvety in appearance. The bones are porous and reddish in color in the lamb, but they are hard and wh white in the mutton. Poor quality meats have darker flesh and the grain is coarse and fibrous. The fat layers are heavy and have a strong flavor. Now um, we will look into the desirable characteristics of the different kinds of meat. In the bacon which is obtained from the back sides of a hog, the meat should be bright red in color and the fat uh, should be present as small flecks of white fat, firm and brittle, foamy, white and odorless. In the case of the wheel, the uh, meat should be pale pink, firm, not soft and flabby and uh, the bone should be pinkish white, porous with a small quantity of blood in the structure. In the case of the lamp, the meat should have a pinkish red color. Um, the fat must be fine grained and velvety in appearance and the bones should be porous and reddish. In the case of the mutton, the color should be a deep red, the fat uh, should not be the fat should not be yellow in color and should not have a strong flavor. The bones should be hard and white. In the pork, the meat should be lean, um, the fat should be white and firm and not excessive and the bone should be small and fine and pinkish. Now let's move on to the uh, different cuts of meat. Meat carcasses are commonly divided into relatively larger wholesale cuts and these are further divided into smaller retail cuts. Distinguishing features of a cut of meat are the size, the shape and the location of the bone, 
the size and shape of muscle found in the cut and the amount of distribution of fat in it. Cuts of meat are prepared by butchers in shops or supermarkets to meet the different needs of the consumers. A wide range of different cuts of meat are available giving greater choice and variety to the customer. Carcass meat is prepared into cuts, joints and mints to make it convenient for the consumer to buy it in smaller amounts, convenient to buy in suitable portion sizes like the chops or the steaks and easier to prepare and quicker to cook and easier to store safely. The butcher usually cuts the meat into three types. They are the boneless cuts, the boned and the rolled joints and the lean and the extra lean cuts. The boneless cuts, the beef, the pork and the lamb can be divided into the boneless cuts. They are economical and suitable for quick and easy methods of cooking like grilling. The boned and the rolled joints of meat, they are smaller joints which help to reduce the cooking time and making it easier to carve. Lean and the extra lean cuts um, uh, are the ones from which the fat is trimmed off uh, so they are usually lower in fat. A carcass of beef, pork or lamb is divided into different cuts which may vary according to the carcass weight and quality. Therefore, cuts of meat vary in energy and nutrients, composition, weight and fat level. Although there are va these variations, Retail cuts of meat are influenced by the structure and composition of the carcass. For example, the position and of the bones and the muscles help in dividing the meat into different cuts. In general terms, the front half of the carcass, which is the forequarter, they have more muscles per meat, but they are worked harder, so they contain more connective tissue and therefore they give less tender cuts. The cuts of meat which are obtained from the neck and the shoulder muscles in particular, they have long thick fibers and, it, and also contain a lot of connective tissue. Whereas the meat from the back half that is the hind quarters of the carcass, they contain fewer muscles and uh, they have also done less work so they have less connective tissue and therefore the hind quarters of the carcass produce the most tender cuts of meat. Cuts of meat from the loin and from the rump muscles have done the least work and they have short inner muscle fibers with less connective tissue and they provide the prime tender cuts. The commonly used meat in India is lamb, mutton. About 70% of all meat used comes from sheep and goat. The wholesale cuts of lambs are legs, loin, racks, breast and shoulders. Each of the wholesale cut is further cut into retail cuts such as chops, rows and neck slices. So here in this picture you will find the different meat cuts. Brisket is one of the cuts obtained from beef. This is a cut that is obtained from the breast or the lower chest of the animal. This normally is, is a tough cut because of the significant amount of connective tissue present in it. And care should be taken to cook the brisket cut carefully to make it tender. Now the steak again is a flat cut of meat obtained from the beef and this is made perpendicular to the muscle fibers. The chuck is a rectangular cut. This is chewy and tough because of the excess connective tissue present in it and some fat around it also makes it um, flavorful. The loin um, is the cut of beef obtained uh, from below the rib cage when the carcass is hanging from the head end. The loin portion of the beef is differentiated into the sirloin, the tender loin and the top sirloin. The tender loin is the most tender cut of beef. The top side and the silver side are taken from the top of the hind legs of the animal. These are lean, boneless cuts. They are best cooked by slow, moist heat methods like braising to tenderize the meat. Now this picture will give you the different lamb meat cuts. Now the breast cut of the lamb is obtained from the belly of the lamb and is a very economical cut. This is fairly fatty. 
but very flavoursome and works best when cooked slowly by roasting. Now fillet is a boneless slice of meat. This can be taken from the neck of the animal or the loin region. Now the best end is the rib, is the rib section of the lamb and the most tender cut of the lamb is obtained from the best end. You will now watch a video on the demonstration of the different meat cuts. Hope this uh, video uh, will help you in identifying the different cuts of meat. Okay. With this we have come to the end of this module. I believe that this module has thrown light on the quality aspects of meat and we have also learnt the desirable characteristics in meat. This again I believe will help us to identify the different cuts of meat when we go to the market or the butcher shop to buy the meat. We have also gained an understanding about the characteristics of the different cuts of meat and the appropriate methods by which they can be cooked to enhance taste and texture and also its nutritive value. Thank you.